Good day everyone, I'm Joseph Olanri and I'm going to be taking you through statistics and econometric analysis training, uh, specifically with the use of eViews. Now this is eViews interface. Uh, eView is basically a statistic, econometric and a forecasting uh, package that allows to make powerful econometric and uh, statistic analysis. And uh, this is the interface, okay, there is little we could do with this now except to bring in data into it. Okay, so first thing first is, how do we bring in data into it? We have a number of ways of doing that, and I'm going to show you one of those ways. Uh, but you need to know that uh, your data need to be saved in an um, Excel file, okay? And you must save it in a place where you can easily uh, identify, locate it on your, on your system, okay? By way of demonstration, you come to File, see File here, you click on File, and then uh, you see the drop-down menu, you see Import, okay? So you navigate through to import from file. Then it's going to take you to a directory. Okay, see document library. Uh, for the sake of this uh, lecture, I saved um, the data with um, uh, practice data. You can see practice data here. Yeah, practice data. Okay, just double click on it. It will import it to uh, export it to views okay you see the highlighted uh, button here you see next you click on next okay you click on next and then you see finish you click on finish you click on no you click on no because uh if you do not click on no it's going to any alteration you make in views will reflect in uh in excel rather will reflect in views okay so we have the data we have the data in um uh views and now we can make our analysis analysis you can do whatever you want to do with the data and now uh in econometric analysis that uh, there are uh, mostly three stages to econometrics analysis we have the pre-estimation test stage we have the estimation stage and then we have the post-estimation stage okay uh for the for the purpose of this video we shall focus on the pre-estimation uh, stage pre-estimation test is very important because it helps you understand the behavior of your variable and it gives you idea into the appropriate estimation techniques you need to adopt in making your analysis okay uh now we have the data we have the asi or share index cps that should be a credit to private sector dump that is domestic depth like that okay uh, the first pre-estimation test i'm going to take you through is the um descriptive statistics descriptive statistics so for this descriptive statistics as many let's assume you are taking uh these four variable asi just click on it and hold on to control okay and then you come and click on the other variable of interest uh dumb depth estimate depth okay let's assume we are focusing on that uh clicking on that just come and right click right click and open as a uh, as group you see it takes it to a spreadsheet it is either you right click and open as group or you just press enter your computer system okay and then you come to view you see the view button here you click on view and uh, straight down you see descriptive statistics okay you have common sample you have individual sample let's see what the two gives us boom okay you see the descriptive statistics okay the essence of descriptive statistics is just to give you the statistic statistical characteristics of your variable the main the median the averages of the of the variables okay the standard deviation the maximum value and the minimum value okay let's go back and go and look at the um okay the last time i think we look at individual statistics let's look at common sample you have virtually the same results okay that is descriptive statistics another thing is that you could make graphs okay okay graph will help you to understand the the behavior of your variable okay the turning point is it uh upward trending down trending on you have unstable trend okay you come click on graph okay you see graph uh we do you want to make it on simple graph or multiple graph okay you have this menu to to explore let's see we are using multiple graphs like this okay and then uh you see here uh, the kind of graph you want to make for the sake of this uh training i decide to use a lion symbol just come and click okay okay it gives you uh the graphs to your variable okay because you choose multiple graph it gives you a multiple okay so you see the asi graph the cps graph the domestic depth and the estimate depth graph that is that 
So the first stage, we look at the descriptive statistics, and now we look at how do we make graph. Okay, this will help you understand the behavior of your variable over time. Then one another important pre-estimation uh, test start is what we call unit truth test. Okay, unit truth test basically allow help us to understand the stationarity property of the series. By stationarity, we want to know if the variable is a variable that is stable over time or the one that is susceptible to change, you know, the one that, okay, it changes at every short interval. Okay, we know that a stationary variable is a variable that will be good for long-run estimation or prediction. But a variable that is uh, non-stationary, it's only good for short-run analysis because uh, such uh, variable, they are subject to high volatility. Okay, so you can continue. Okay, let's say, let's delete this, delete group. Okay, now you want to do unit truth test. Okay, just click on the variable. That's ASI. Come to view. You see, come, see the drop down menu. You see unit truth test. You click on it. Okay, we have a number of uh, unit truth tests start here. You have the augmented Dikifula, you have the Dikifula GS, Philip Perron, uh, KPAS, and all the likes like that. But the common, the most common uh, unit truth test that, that uh, that I use these days are the uh, ADF and the, the Philip Perron kind of. So let's stick to, to those ones. Now, let's assume we pick ADF. Okay. Let's see the test for unit level. You have levels, first difference, second difference. Then you see test equal. You have intercept, trend and intercept. You have none. Okay. Let's say we are conducting for trend and intercept. Then we want to look at levels. We want to know if it is stationary at levels or not. Click on OK. Now, you see? You see the augmented degree test test? Now, one thing you must know is that your ADF must be negative. Negative and it must be less than any of the test critical values at 1%, 5%, or 10% uh, significant level. You see, this is negative. This is minus uh, 3.5194, OK? It is greater than minus 4.27. It is greater than minus 3.55, or it is less than minus 3.21. So in this case, you can say this is stationary at 10%. The null hypothesis that it has unit true test. Now, if the ADF test statistics is less than any of this significant level test, 1%, 5%, or 10%, we say that uh, we reject the null hypothesis that it has unit truth. And uh, uh, we, as, we we reject it, the null hypothesis that uh, it has a unit truth, and we conclude that it has no unit truth. That means it is a very it is stationary. Okay, it is stationary, and by stationary we mean I O variable. Stationary variable is a high O variable. Such variables are f good for long run analysis. Okay, that is that for ASI. Okay, because it is stationary at levels, you might not you might not need to go further to check for uh to look at it at first difference okay let's pick another variable let's say we pick uh cps come to view uh you need to test okay adf level strand and intercept okay let's still go with that bam okay look at this see the result you realize that the adf test statistics is positive it's positive okay that is telling you that this has unit truth. It, the result has to be negative. Okay, that is not the only condition. They, it must be less than any of the test critical value. So in this case, it is not stationary. It is not stationary at levels. Okay, now you can now go ahead and check for it at first difference. You click on unit truth. You see false difference, false difference. Try and intercept your stay on that option and then okay. It is also not stationary at first difference. Okay. Now, uh, in this case, uh, you might need to find a proxy for this variable or you log and see the way it behaves because uh, you it is not advisable to go beyond false difference in economic analysis because uh, second difference does not make any economic interpretation. But again, let's look at all that um, unit to test statistics to confirm our result. Let's say we try Philip Perron. Okay, Philip Perron. Let's look at levels. Also, trend and intercept. Okay. 
okay we realize that uh, the pp is negative but then it is greater than uh, either of the whole of the critical values so we conclude that it's not stationary if what levels uh you need to test at uh false difference okay now look at it look at pp we realize that the pp test statistics is negative and at the same time it is less than whole or the test critical value at one percent look at it we have minus 4.35 that is the pp test statistics in at 1%, we have minus 4. So it is less than we can say this is stationary at first difference. Stationary at first difference, okay? And at 1% significant level. Okay, so that is how you con conduct your unit true test. You do that for all the variables that uh, you need. Basically, when you're doing your analysis, it's always advisable you adopt uh, like two unit true test statistics, okay? So as to how uh, to corroborate your result, the validity of your result. Okay, that is unit truth, one of the pre-estimation tests. Unit truth is very, very important, like I said. That will help you to determine whether your model, you should est uh, uh, estimate the short-run model or a long-run model. Okay, then we'll get in my next video, we'll talk about estimation, the estimation stage. And then we can look at the various type of estimation and the condition for choosing the estimation techniques. Okay, uh, another pre-estimation um, pre test uh is a let's say co-integration test co-integration test co integrate okay let's say after we've conducted the unit two test we realize that we have mixture of a uh, stationary and non-stationary variable stationary variable are variables that are stationary at levels okay non-stationary variables are variables that are stationary at false difference okay let's say we have mixture okay now we need to know if a long run relationship exists uh among the variable or exists in the model okay uh we can do this by uh conducting what we call co-integration test co-integration test help us establish if there is a long run relationship in the model so let's assume we are taking just you're taking four variables uh asi uh sorry sorry for that okay let's say we pick asi and then um uh we we'll come here cps domestic debt estimate okay okay let's look at these five variables okay you want to see if there's a longer relationship between these five variables okay just uh you press your enter key or you right click and uh you hope one has group see the spreadsheet this is the spreadsheet we want to do a co-integration test come come to view see the drop down menu uh co-integration test do you see it see johansson co-integration test you click on it okay lag interval one one just click on okay boom you see your result you see your result this is the co-integration test now uh the null hypothesis for this is that um there is no longer relationship in the model okay now you would see we have the trace statistics and then we have the uh, critical value at 5% level. When your trace statistics is more than your critical value, we for at any of these uh, hypotheses, I put I hypothesize number of uh, okay. You see this 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 column. Okay, we say there is co-integration. You see, come here. You see trace tests indicate four co-integration equation. It doesn't have to be four. It could be one. If you have any co-integration equation in the model. It could be at most one it could be at most two at most three okay if we have any co-integrating co equation in the model it symbolizes that there's a longer relationship in the model that is for um uh trace statistics and then we have our max engine value statistics there too you would see yeah you see that uh, there's only co-integration at um at most one percent Again, the criteria is that the max engine statistics must be more than the critical value. You realize that this value is more than this value, and this value is more than this value. Okay. So, here, yeah, you come down here, you say, max engine value test indicate two co-integrating equation at 5% uh, five level. Okay, it means that in this model, there is a long ground relationship in the model. <clears throat> okay. So, with this, it's a green light that we could actually use this variable we could actually estimate the long run equation with this variable. Okay, that is that. Um, another 
pretest statistics you can do is what we call um uh correlation matrix correlation matrix okay you highlight a variable put it in a spreadsheet come to view view okay when you come to view you see covariance analysis click on covariance analysis okay you can undo this covariance click on a correlation and click on probability this probability is important because we help you to understand know whether this correlation is statistically significant or not so come to click okay boom you see this is your uh correlation analysis okay these are probability values and these probability values tell you whether they are significant or not see correlate degree of association between cps and asi is positive 0 0.7 and statistically significant so that is correlation analysis okay uh the last pre-estimation tests that i would introduce you today is what we call a causality test causality test is important because it helps you to know the importance or it helps you to know how one variable how importance is a variable in predicting uh, changes in another variable okay if there's a causality between two variable it means that variable is important in predict predicting changes in the other variable okay open your spreadsheet you click on view and then uh you see join your consultant test okay click on okay you have lab two lags you can stick to that you can stick with that you press okay and then you have it okay you see the null hypothesis there's no grandeur cause uh as a cps there's no grandeur cause um asi okay uh, we look at the probability value okay when the probability value is less than 0 0.10 we can reject the null hypothesis but if it is 0 0.10 and above we can uh, accept the null hypothesis so for this one cps is not grander cost asi yeah we reject the null hypothesis or we accept the null hypothesis rather yes there's no causality between them but if we look at this asi does not grant your cursor cps look at the probability value 0, 0.00 we reject the null hypothesis okay so here we can say asi grant your causes cps okay but cps does not grant your cursor um, asi so here we can say that is a unidirectional causality from asi to cpi thank you everyone please watch out for the next video thank you